Mac Voices TV at Macworld 2010 is sponsored by Data Robotics, the makers of Drobo and Drobo S, the world's best data storage experience. Welcome back to Mac Voices TV at Macworld 2010. I'm Chuck Joyner, and as we go around the show floor, I ran into Rich Mogul of Tidbits and Securosis. Rich, it's good to talk to you. Thanks, Chuck. Good to run into you yet again. Yeah, yeah, we uh, we got to have lunch, had lunch yesterday, got to have breakfast this morning, and now here we are, and this time we got the camera, though, so. Yeah, if this keeps up, I might uh, have to talk to a lawyer or a judge to, yeah. Well, a judge, a judge. <laughs> How are you finding the show so far? Uh, it's pretty good, you know, obviously the floor just opened. Uh, I have not been over to the other side yet, so, I mean, clearly it's a little bit different than it's been in the past with, uh, uh, obviously, with Apple pulling out, but there still seems to be a pretty good variety of, uh, of uh, exhibitors down here. Yeah, nice, nice variety, great, Great traffic, we're right at the moment, we're having trouble moving around a little, so that's a nice thing. Yeah, yeah, it's actually, it's pretty hard to get around. I keep bumping into yeah. people and trying to hover around the edges to see who I need to go talk with later. Yeah, exactly. Rich, what's going on in the world of security? There's there's so much talk always, it seems, about you know this scary thing or that scary thing. Are there any really scary things we should be aware of, or is most of what we're hearing hype right now? You know, funny you should ask that, because uh, this month's issue of Macworld, so we're in March now, well, it's February, but it's the March issue. Uh, I actually have an article of all the top threats, so the top 13 threats. And what surprised a lot of people is most of them, they're not about Mac-specific things. It's not like worms and viruses. It's uh, phishing emails and uh, eBay fraud and Craigslist fraud and those sorts of things. Uh, there's a lot going on in those areas where they're getting very good at scamming us as individual people, uh, relying less on the technology to fool us and just more our human nature. And that seems to be something that goes back to some of the early days of hacking where they, they talked about, you know, the, the easiest way to do it was to just talk your way in rather than crack your way in. Yeah, I mean, it's always been that way. Uh, although we have some, some things actually are getting a little scary in certain areas. If you run a small business, for example, there's a lot of problems with small business bank accounts being attacked in, in different ways. Uh, mostly people are, you know, those are older Windows PCs, not maintained. Bad guys get malicious software on there and, and directly go ahead and uh, literally take money out of your bank accounts because it's not protected the same way as other things. But, but the reality is, is, you know, look, human nature, one of my, I have these guiding principles of security, and the very first one is, don't expect human behavior to change, ever. And, you know, we're always going to be fallible creatures, and we're always going to make mistakes, and it's, uh, you know, the same scams we see today are derivatives of, you know, the, the first time Grog tricked Ugg into giving him the shiny rock, because uh, by promising him two shiny rocks later. Yeah, I, it's, it's interesting. I've watched new spam hit my mailbox, you know, from allegedly from UPS or FedEx about, you know, a package that needs to be picked up or something that didn't get delivered. Just click right here and everything will be fine. And you, you just, you know, but it's still amazing to me how many people don't even think about it. They just take it at, uh, at face value, click it, and they have potentially opened up a hole. Uh, well, it's hard. I mean, they are really good these days. Uh, I got one I almost fell for because they had just enough info about me. Because in some cases, they actually research you now uh, to be able to go ahead and execute some of these attacks. And, uh, you know, it, it's really impressive, some of the techniques they've come up with. Uh, financial institutions are really, really struggling with this in particular because that's where a lot of these attacks are going on. Some cases, uh, they'll, they'll call you on the phone using VoIP phones. And so, uh, yeah, I think... Uh, you know, I, I wish these people would put as much effort into, say, a legitimate business because we could probably really expand the economy, but uh, apparently it's easier just to run around and mess with people's heads. Sometimes I think it's just a challenge that they find intriguing and then they got to find a way to capitalize on it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I, I mean, and some of them are ridiculous, too. I mean, I'm sure anybody watching this has seen some of the spelling, uh, shall we say, and grammar issues. Uh, and yet, you know, I, I thought nobody falls for this stuff, and yet they do. Uh, so. Yeah. Uh, it's unfortunate, so I don't know, maybe we should teach people how to spell better and then they'll figure out the bad guys easier. Rich, this is probably a t way too early to start the conversation in depth, but at least we can ask. Looking toward the iPad, I mean, we've all got iPhones in our pockets right now. Any tips for us with the iPhone and then headed toward the iPad? Yeah, so the iPhones are actually pretty secure. Uh, the biggest tip is don't jailbreak your iPhone. Uh, jailbreaking actually removes some of the most important security controls on the iPhone. There's no security breaches that are in the wild or even my research friends know about today, uh, well, that they've told me about, that can get, a, uh, that can get through a fully um, current patched iPhone 
But when you jailbreak it, you remove some very important controls. So that, that's a huge deal to protect yourself. Also, uh, use the keypad lock. Let's see, oh, mine's not locked. But you know, set that keypad password. Uh, set it so that it'll wipe out if you enter your passcode in 10 times wrong. Because guess what, if it's your iPhone, well, if you wipe it out, you just restore it back from your, uh, your iTunes backup anyway. Uh, now, what's really interesting is the iPad because uh, depending on the, we don't know what the security features are. There's some hardware encryption, for example, on the iPhone, uh, on the 3GS, it doesn't work. They, Apple re kind of works, but Apple really messed up that particular implementation. Uh, if they fix that on the iPad, for example, it would be most secure than almost any other device an enterprise would use, or a business would use, uh, because of how tightly locked down the system is. So this is the flip side to having a closed system that so many people seem to be disturbed with about Apple, that they are doing the security mostly right and ha certainly have the potential to do it right. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, there's when you lock the entire system down, even to the ability to install applications, that gives you a lot of security benefits uh, uh, outside of We spent a lot, a lot of time on our, so I do a lot of work with big businesses on having, figuring out how to lock those systems down in, in kind of similar ways. And when you build it into the hardware, I mean, yes, the really good bad guys will always figure some way out, but, you know, it makes it much, much um, more difficult. You know, and on a related note, I, you know, kind of that, that whole, well, it doesn't multitask, and it doesn't have USB, and it's a closed system, so it's going to fail. Uh, you know, look, that's fine. For, for the, us geeks out there, there will always be open devices for us to get our hands on, to play with, and to experiment with. But let's be honest, there's a large percentage of the population that is underserved by something that just works and turns on. And uh, I, I think that's what Apple's targeting here, and I think it's actually, you know, going to be pretty successful, probably. And I keep saying, it's a 1.0 product. You know, folks, it's a 1.0. Let it get out, let us find out about it, and then we'll start to talk about what the 2.0 should be like. Yeah, exactly. I didn't buy the 1.0 iPhone. It looked great and beautiful, but it was not going to meet my needs. 2.0 came out, and I bought it. I was here at Macworld. Kind of upset my wife a little bit, actually. She said, don't come home with an iPhone. And I called her up that night, I'm like, um, honey, uh... <laughs> I'm not coming home. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> of course. Now she has one, and half her family has one. So, uh, yeah. Were, were there any instructions for this macro? Uh, I'm supposed to actually pick up a gift for my brother-in-law. Hopefully, he doesn't watch this. Uh, if I find anything interesting within a certain price range. Okay. That was it. I, I'm off the hook this year. <laughs> good. So go forth with the credit card and have a good time. Yeah. I, <laughs> it's not like I do a lot of security conferences. I'm not going to buy a firewall and take yeah. it home. Macworld's a lot more fun and dangerous. <laughs> Rich, it's good to see you. Thanks for taking the time. Uh, we'll see you a little more often, I hope. Yeah, that would be great. Thanks for having me on, Chuck. Great. Websites? Uh, you can find me. My writing on most of my Mac stuff is over at Tidbits. Obviously, I said uh, there's a Macworld issue, so Tidbits, it's tidbits.com. And for security-related information, you can track me down at securosis.com, S-E-C-U-R-O-S-I-S.com. Thank you, sir. Good to see you. You too. Take care. I'm Chuck Joyner. This is Mac Voices TV at Macworld 2010. We'll be back with more from the show floor soon. Thanks for watching. Mac Voices TV at Macworld 2010 is sponsored by Data Robotics, the makers of Drobo and Drobo S, the world's best data storage experience. Mac Voices TV is part of the Mac Voices Group and a member of Mac Level 10.